Well, everybody, welcome. Um, welcome to this uh, part of the PDP. Uh, like, he, like he said, I'm Coach Gallagher, and this is Dr. Patterson um, uh, from El Dorado Hills. Uh, we've known each other for how long now? Uh, a, bit, a, 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 few, few, a few years now, and um, he's been uh, a personal friend as well as a um, subject matter expert in my life for a while, and so I invited him in to tackle a topic that is big both on the line and also with the day staff. And it's talking about low level fight or flight. And before we get into it, I just kind of kind of give you some direction on where we're going in health and fitness and what really is important. Uh, um, I think on the fitness side, you know, I've always talked about how Metro has fitness pretty much down. You know, there's always room for improvement, always room to get more information out there, more equipment, different types of equipment, but that's just one section of it. But where we really want to do a deep dive in is in, in the rest and recovery side. And what you're doing on your off hours, what you're doing at the station to recover from the stresses that you're going through. You know, more, more time on the wall, um, uh, more calls, whatever's going on, you know, um, uh, nutritional issues, all those things. That's, that's really where, where we want to, um, where I want to spend a lot of time. And this is just the beginning. So uh, that's kind of where we're going. And, and when people ask me about it, you know, like I got asked at a, a chief's meeting, uh, uh, Chief Harms, we, we had a discussion about it. And I basically said, you know, the, the, the safety department works on the firefighter from the outside in with, the P, with, the, your, um, with your turnouts and your SCBA and your gloves and all that stuff to keep you protected. You know, my job is to work on you from the inside out from this, this program's job actually is to work on you from the inside out. And, and a big part of that is the ability to rest and recover. So that being said, the topic for today is going to be on uh, low-level fight or flight. And the way it's going to work is, is I'm going to um, give Dr. Patterson the stage, and we're going to kind of uh, – he's going to talk about it, and I might inter interject some questions. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of information here, and it's not an easy one-road topic. It really can, can branch out to many others. And there'll probably be some questions that come up that, that you'd like to ask. Um, in, this, in, in this setting, just raise your hand. Uh, we're, we're definitely encouraging questions uh, of, of all types because there's a lot of answers and there's a lot of stuff out there. And so this, what I'd like to see happen from this is, is we actually develop some other topics that you want to hear about. I want to hear what those are. And then those turn into podcasts. And we start diving into all those things that are out there. Um, and, and get your questions answered and just open things up for exploration on what works for you because everybody in the room is different. And so they're, you know, so everybody's got their own path they're on and we'd like to explore that more. So without talking more, uh, Doc, I'm going to just give you the stage and you can talk about, you know, give us a little introduction of where you're from and, and we'll go from there. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sean Patterson, nice to meet you all and see you all. Um, Dr. Sean's fine. If you ever address me or, or hey you, that works to get my attention. Uh, the Dr. Patterson thing makes me feel like you should be talking to my dad or something, you know. Um, I got to work on my acronyms. PDP, what are all the letters? You, you guys are, you know. Uh, I, no I got idea. TPS reports. I got uh, UFC. That's one of them. So I've worked with, uh, you guys know UFC fighters? Anybody a UFC fan? Good, good group down in Stockton. Uh, so I've, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Mr. Diaz for and his crew for a while now, last five, six years. So my background is in sports fitness and, and how, you know, working with people who get punched in the face for a living and then working with, you know, stay home moms who are just trying to get their hormones regulated and everything in between. And so um, I never set out to do that. I, I set out more for just athletics and I moved to a place called Placerville in 2002 and realized there's a lot of sick people and not a lot of athletes. Well, there's a lot of athletes, but you know, there's, there's, there's athletes and there's athletes, but um so for the last 20 years, I've been in practice. Um, I'm a friend to many firefighters, and I consider many firefighters my friend. Uh, in fact, Mr. Roland here, I go way back. I think, uh, gosh, my wife taught your daughter when she was, what, six years old? And now she's all grown up. And so uh, he, he's a, a dear friend, and he, you've been at this a long time, yeah? yeah? So you've gone from the young man stage of being a firefighter to more the mature side of being a firefighter and how to take care of your body. And I don't mean that as a joke. I mean, really, like who here remembers when they were 25? Male, female, everybody, right? You could do a lot more when you were 25. And now, you know, once you get close to 50, it's like, wow, I never even knew I had an elbow until every time I extend it, it goes clunk. And, you know, anybody have those kind of things. So what we want to talk about today is the fight or flight. 
And, and you could fact check me and there's probably nothing out there in this world called the low level fight or flight, uh, unless by happenstance, I thought of that and somebody else did too. But I do think that is a thing. And what I mean by low level fight or flight, it, we'll get into that today because I believe most of you are stuck in that most of your lives. Uh, whether you're 25 or 65 or, or even on the out, outliers of that. So, but what is fight or flight, right? We have our first slide there, sir, is uh, this is something that's near and dear to most of you. W what is that? That's, that's the tones, right? So what is that? that? That triggers what we call a fight or flight response, right? Those tones go off. For those of you who haven't heard the tones, which I have it. I mean, I've heard them, but not while I was in a dead sleep or while I was doing something else. But um, the only thing I could associate that similar is who, who here has newborn baby ever have a you're dead asleep and a newborn baby screams in the middle of the night and it's jarring. The, so that was, you know, that, that's a lot of the civilian version of the tones. But what that does, is it creates a fight or flight response. It, it's your brain saying, get up and go. Right. And, and for most of you in the room, um, you know, these calls could be very innocuous and harmless and they could be really really wild and and dangerous and i would we would all agree yeah these these tones are they mean get up and go so what happens when you when you get up and go what needs to happen when you go from being asleep or relaxed to getting up and going and going and and taking care of a, a of a fire or a, an accident what kind of things like throw th some things out there what needs to happen in your body Wake up, yes. So the next slide is the adrenal glands, which, so who here has heard of the adrenals? Adrenal glands, you have two of them, they sit on the kidneys. You know, we only need a half a kidney to live. It's wild that we have two. I, I think, uh, I just, I, I always joke and tell people, you know, the good Lord knew we would have stressful lives, so we have redundancy. You have two sets of adrenal glands, or you know, one set, one pair. And uh, the adrenal glands makes your fight or flight hormones. So the fight or flight hormones are cortisol, which you said, you gotta wake up. Cortisol also is an anti-inflammatory. Who here knows what cortisone injections are, right? They're sticking that stuff in everybody nowadays, knees, ankles, backs, necks. It's an anti-inflammatory. We're probably not making enough of our own, number one. Uh, what else needs to happen when you have to go to a call and you go from being relaxed to being in a high state of alert? Do you need more or less blood pressure? More blood pressure. More or less blood sugar? More blood sugar more or less minerals in your blood to contract muscles, more. So everything's more, 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 right? And uh, the idea of this fight or flight response is um, you have to be able to go from relaxed to high level of function, and then you have to go back to the recovery mode, right? Everybody agrees that's kind of how it works. So the low level fight or flight, in my opinion, uh, and what I've seen over the last 20 years being in practice is people go from low to high but they're not really good at settling back into that low, calm, relaxed state where the heart rate's low, you're back in a parasympathetic response, you're actually digesting food, you know, uh, you're actually fighting off colds and viruses because in a, sti a state of fight or flight, your body doesn't care about food, doesn't care about what you ate for lunch, it cares about danger, get out of danger, fight or flight. So when those tones go off, you usually will suppress digestive blood flow up to 75%. So when you're in a state of fight or flight, you're not digesting, you're not fighting colds, you're not fighting viruses, your body doesn't care. I mean, it's not absolute, but you get what I'm saying? Your body's not very interested in like, well, you know, we should get a little more vitamin C in that common cold. I don't want to get a runny nose. No, no, you're like, it's time to go. You got to be up and moving. So what, what Patrick asked me to do is just talk about like, Okay, what happens when you get into this fight or flight and how do we recover? Because the dangers of not recovering, um, that next slide will, will tell us a little bit. Um, the brain and the gut connection has a lot to do with how our body works, obviously. The gut is called the second brain in neuroscience. It's fascinating because your colon makes, is basically your pharmacy for your brain. So we already said in a fight or flight response, what happens to the gut? It, it kind of powers down up to 75% of the blood is diverted away from your gut to your skeletal muscles, right? And, and remember, uh, fight or flight is not just the tones. It's uh, who here likes to work out very intensely? Anybody CrossFit, um, you know, mixed martial arts, people who like to run. And um, some of the issues lie with if you don't know what your aerobic capacities are, you're kind of gambling a little bit on that. You guys have heard of like VO2 max and things like that and the difference between being aerobic versus anaerobic. So that makes all the difference in how your body handles its fight or flight. Um, but practically speaking, um, 
weight loss or weight gain is going to be influenced by that. Um, depression, anxiety, things like that are going to be influenced by how much you're in fight or flight. Um, so see on the bottom there, that little microbe, that little uh, looks like a bowl of red and blue pills. It's not from the matrix. It's, uh, it's gut microbiotics. And that is what actually produces our neurotransmitters for our brain. Like 90 to 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut. You guys have heard of serotonin? It's a big buzzword, right? The, the, it, it's your ability to feel good about yourself or feel content. And there's lots of other things it does. It has to do with digestion, has to do with um, bone health. I mean, if you just Google the word serotonin, it's shocking how many uh, functions it has in your body. So what happens when we fight flight? We decrease gut function. And there's a lot of people who suffer from everything from, um, you know, things we don't like to talk about, right? Constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome, just a painful stomach, upset stomach. But we usually wait until one of those things is present to think something's wrong with our gut. But a lot of times it's anxiety and depression that can be. Um, and there, there's uh, research in the UK that even shows schizophrenia and autism is gut mediated because they're healing autistic and and schizophrenic people by healing the gut. So, yeah. um, so that's the fight or flight. I just want to insert also, you know, we talked about the tones going off and that's just one example, you know, for, for those of us that don't live in that world, we have our own tones that get us. And, um, another reason, uh, like, like I said, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot going on here. You know, we tend to just focus in on, okay, oh, it's the adrenals. Uh, yeah. The adrenals are also attached to the gut and then the brain and the microbes and and so the goal here is to just kind of start thinking holistically about, you know, give you as many tools in your tool belt to understand if you're having issues, what could it be? Because it's usually not just one thing. Like a big buzzword, for example, is testosterone we might talk about later. Oh, I got to get my testosterone up. Oh, no, it's a lot more complicated than that. Because if these other things are off, you know, then there could be some issues there and you may not be hitting the target. And we're really good at doing that. Oh, let's medicate that one thing. Let's get rid of matter of fact. You can have your adrenals taken out of your body. That is, that's not a good thing. So that's the whole goal here is that you see things bigger. Um, you know, wow, this is a very connected uh, piece of machinery we, we have here. And it's not just an easy fix, but yet again, it kind of is. So, you know, that, I just want to make sure that you're not, you know, um, um, get locked in on just, you know, that one time you got woken up at night. There's a lot, a lot more to it. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you. I, I don't want to get too, that, that was more the technical piece of things, right? That's what the adrenal glands do. They make once again, testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, progesterone, which these are important hormones. Progesterone is your protective hormone. In in people with dementia, they're finding just about all of them are estrogen dominant or low progesterone. Uh, estrogen isn't bad. It's not necessarily a female hormone. That's why men have it too. It makes things grow, blood vessels and nerves. Testosterone is not just uh, a, a male hormone. It is an androgen, like estrogen is more feminizing in higher levels. But for health, testosterone is your muscle mass, has a lot to do with your immune system, your sex drive. Um, it has a lot to do with bone health and ligament health. And you know, who here has ever you know, blown a ligament, a muscle, a tendon? A lot of that can be suboptimal testosterone. So it's really important that our, our hormones are balanced. When we get out of balance, we get in trouble. Uh, but these adrenal hormones are pretty much, um, they're, they're the, the sweet spot for health if they work right. And if they're not working right, you're guaranteed to have just about every problem you hear nowadays. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, we'll get into those symptoms and how to kind of self, not self-diagnose, but just to go, hey, maybe I'm one of these low level fight or flight people. So uh, the next slide is uh, uh, for those of you who are vegetarian or vegan in the room, they're just playing tag. So, um, <laughs> but you know, the cheetah was it. And uh, so man's version or woman's version, human's version of stress versus nature's version of stress. So here's truly a fight or flight. That cheetah wakes up and it's hungry, right? And when it's time to kill, it goes into its own fight or flight mode. So like we said before, when, when, a, when an animal like that is hungry, its eyesight improves, its blood pressure goes up, its blood sugar goes up, its mineral, it, it's ready to eat, okay? And uh, those of you know, a, a cheetah runs real fast, obviously, uh, hopefully a little faster than the gazelle is the idea if it wants lunch. Um, you guys ever watch one of those like old school National Geographic 
you know, videos when they actually chase the prey. The cheetah, when it's done, whether it gets the gazelle or not, it's frothing at the mouth. It's got a maximum heart rate. I mean, they run like 60 miles an hour and it's almost dying. It really is. Like if it doesn't go lie down, it will die. It'll stroke out or have a heart attack. So whether it gets lunch or not, it goes and lies down. We call that recovery, right? So nature shows us the blueprint. You know, we're supposed to be pretty chill until we need to be up on our game. And then we're supposed to go rest and recover. You guys are all a bunch of cheetos, right? You're, you're going from trying to live a healthy, productive life. You go to work and then you need to be able to pop into that fight or flight mode. It's at home too, but we're, we're kind of putting this in the kind of the SAC metro. Or those of you who aren't out in the field, those of you, anybody ever come to work and you're more administrative? That could be stressful, yeah? Right? The fight or Absolutely. flight might be a different trigger, but it's still fight or flight, right? Deadlines and bosses and the person sitting next to you right now, you know, things like that. Those can be very stressful events, right? Right. <laughs> um, but the idea is man's version, human's version of stress has become way, way different than it used to be, right? Like we have stresses now that didn't even exist 20 years ago, right? Like um, we have we have cell phone distraction, we have screens, we have um i mean just we have so many different stresses that we just didn't in a hundred years ago heck did we when did we get electricity anybody know 150 years ago something like that we didn't 200 years ago to be safe we didn't even have refrigerators and electricity and we were living a lot more simple and uh you know we pride ourselves on on health in america we're doing so well in our industrial nation as far as living a little bit longer and and you know children don't die as readily as they used to but as far as healthier and happier i don't think the statistics are showing that's happening. There's not much, uh, there's not much happiness and health in civilization unless you really seek it out because the default is too much stress, right? And um, we don't want to blame everything on work. We don't want to blame everything on, like we we're joking around, the person sitting next to you. We, we really want to understand there's lots of stresses of life and we want to try to take responsibility for the stresses we can control, okay? So at work, there's going to be stress. That's it. That's just how it works. Anybody here join the you know fire academy or apply to work here, not thinking this would be a stressful gig? I mean, we all know fighting fires is is a stressful gig, and some some lose their life, some get sick, some get injured, some work great careers and they get a little beat up. Um, my wife's uncle died. Uh, he was a Cal Fire, and uh, he's memorialized in Sacramento. I remember. Um, you guys remember when that memorial you visited? That it's beautiful. It was a great ceremony. I think it was two thousand and three ish. And uh, her uncle was on there, and they're a firefighter family. His daughter went on to marry a firefighter, Justin McGough. He's, uh, I believe he's a, a deputy fire chief in Corona now. He's with Cal Fire, um, obviously. I was going to mention my good friend Dave Roland over there. So I, I care about firefighters, and I've seen it. But it's a stressful job. Same with other public service. And um, so I have a question yeah, for you. Yeah, go ahead and interject. So the... Um uh because when i you know when i've what i've heard from you know or you know we, we talk about there, there's a saying why there's a book out called um why don't zebras have ulcers you know and and uh, it, it's talking about the difference between uh, a man's version of fight or flight and a, and an animal's version and so is it safe to assume that when this cheat is done it's going to sit down it's not going to worry it's not depressed about what happened before. It's not going to worry about whether they're going to find another meal and, 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 you know, twiddle its, its paws. It's going to just rest, recover. And then what comes its way and now it's up and ready to go again, where when we go home from a lack of being able to make it happen, whatever that is, whether we're uh, our job performance or whatever, is going to get us stressed out. We tend to focus on that, you know, in one shape or another, we're always seem to be quite worried about the future, how things are going to turn out, um, or you know maybe even the other way, we're depressed about our past, and those are all stressors on our body. And is that is that safe to say that that you know the um, that an animal doesn't quite have that sort of memory to 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 lock in and and spend a lot of time twirling the the brain trying to figure things out yeah absolutely in yeah. fact what separates us from you know the animals uh, it, it's been said is our frontal lobe it's our higher reasoning our higher yeah. thinking lobe. it's also the thing that gets us in trouble because we're so aware of things that maybe we shouldn't be what will they think right that's a big one in today's culture with social media and just fear of 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 being embarrassed or shamed or guilty or or ridiculed there, there's a lot of stresses that don't exist in in the animal kingdom but the brain is not meant to live in tomorrow, 
Okay, we can't solve tomorrow's Absolutely. problems with today's energy. Okay, we just get enough for today. Anybody here ever thinking about tomorrow? Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Retirement, family issues. Is my body going to hold up? Uh, aging parents, yeah. kids that are driving us nuts that we think we can control, but we learn real quick we can't. Um, so it, it is a different world. And, and the North American culture is is pretty exhausting, right? Because here's most people I know. You go to work and you're kind of stressed out. And then you go home and you have your days off. And what do we do on our days off? We often eat stressful food. We do stressful exercise. We think stressful thoughts. We breathe stressful air. We drink stressful water, you know, and that's not even the chemical side or the emotional side or the, you know, light pollution side. A lot of us don't even know there's a thing called light pollution. There's a lot of waves in this world, right? Everything is light frequency. So here's our visible light spectrum. Really, really strong is violet. That's on the bottom of a rainbow. It's any stronger, it's ultraviolet. That'll burn us, right? infrared red is the big looping one on top any weaker is infrared we can't see it but that will create heat too and there's all these waves right cosmic rays gamma waves x x rays um there's cell phones there's wi-fi who knows if any of this is helpful or harmful we know it you know i like to be tan but then you we get afraid of skin cancer right so then we lather up with sunscreen and then we find out sunscreen gives us cancer so we get stuck in these but instead of freaking out, worrying about everything, what we can do is let's control what we can control. And I'd like to give a few tips and hacks by the end of this to where you could maybe introduce those to your own life and lower your cumulative threshold. Because remember, it's okay to be stressed as long as you recover. But if you sit in the middle, right, somewhere in the middle where you never really recover, but you're never really that stressed. Like right now, there's people in this room, I promise you, if I were to line y'all up and start taking blood pressure and blood sugar, and and bone density levels holy cow our eyes would all get big We'd go oh my gosh i did not realize we're all aging too fast or falling apart you know and and that's what i do in my office it's like wow I, you are really you know uh fit but you're falling apart you know because you're using tomorrow's energy for today yes you did that that those deadlifts of what yeah. you know 400 500 pounds and you did great but did you know your bone density is suffering because of it which makes no sense right you're like my bone should be strong because i'm really really physically fit but if you're robbing hormones from tomorrow you're breaking down bones for energy for today so we don't want that to happen we want you guys to have a long you know longevity and feel good at 35, 45, 55, yeah. 65. Absolutely. And and that's, you know, on the on the um the line side, you know, we have these conversations you know, with the workouts, you know, and or if somebody comes up and says, Hey, I want to run a triathlon. Okay, that's great. You know, what does recovery look like? What are you gonna are you gonna be able to recover? Because you're gonna have to chop off the overtime. You're gonna have to, you know, find a way to not run that busy station, let's say, to get through it healthy. You might get through it and grind it out, but again, you will rob you'll rob the future to make that happen. And those, the older folks in the room, they're kind of nodding their head going, yeah, I did that once, you know, you ran a marathon and then you paid for it for three months because you didn't recover properly, both during your training and then after the actual event, just because of the, the, the lifestyle that, that are this career that you've chosen, you know? And, um, and so that's, that's one part of it that as a health and fitness manager, trying to work with you on that, you know, um, give you what you need for your workouts, but are you recovering properly? Are you doing hard workouts on day two versus day one when you're fr maybe fresh, you know? So kind of getting eyes on that and going, man, is is what I did yesterday and how I recovered help, is the reason why my back hurts today. Because it wasn't the patient, it was probably your recovery somewhere along the line. And I've said it to most of you that um, uh, because of your activity, that you're never fully recovered. You most of most of of the folks I've worked with, they're never fully recovered, right? Because you're young and you're using all that energy, you it will catch up to you, and it does with the older folks. But this is just kind of what we want to get eyes on. And um, you know, am I in the position where I should be doing some of these things that are very common uh, to other folks, but they have the ability to go home and get rest and get a good night's sleep and come back and do it again, where you've got to stay up all night and run calls, let's say. So, just being careful with that. Yeah. So. Uh, adrenal stress hormones and brain chemicals. So cortisol, cortisol, you guys have heard of cortisol? We talked about that for a minute, cortisone injection. Cortisol manages blood sugar, basically your metabolism of carbohydrate. It's a really powerful stress hormone. Comes from the adrenal cortex, which is the outside of the adrenal gland. And uh, 
I, I do salivary hormone testing on probably, I don't even know if it's thousands now, it might be, it's for sure you know, deep into the hundreds of men and women, pre and post, and sometimes a third and a fourth test of, of salivary hormones because um, we're looking at their tissue hormone levels and across the board, suboptimal test, uh, well, almost everything. Um, but more than not, it's the cortisol that's not working right. And the problem with cortisol is because it's your primary stress hormone. But if you have too little cortisol or too much cortisol, you can't sleep right. Anybody here ever been tired and wired? You're exhausted and you're just like, or, or you go to sleep and you're out and then at 2 a.m., no tones, no baby screaming, no, you're just awake, right? And uh, that happened... That happened to me when I when I hit my 40s. I started to have that happen, and and then the problem, you know, then I get angry about it. Anybody ever get angry when they wake up and they're tired and wired? And then once you're angry and your stress hormones, okay, I'm not going back to sleep. But cortisol is really important for allergies. Who here is you know chronic allergy people? You know, I have allergies, seasonal allergies, right? All four seasons, you know, it just keeps on coming. Now it's the mold. Now it's the grass. Now it's the dogs. Now it's the you know, whatever. Um, but we see a lot of these kind of things with low cortisol and that's just too much fight or flight, too much fight or flight. So that's one of your little, you know, uh, heads up. If you're finding yourself having way too many allergies, way too many joint problems, the itises, right? Anybody ever go to a doctor and get diagnosed with an itis? You tell them where it hurts and then they tell you the name of the an anatomy followed by itis, right? If it's a joint, you have arthritis. If it's a tendon, you have tendonitis if it's a bursa bursitis, bursitis right and we go and it's just and it's this inflammatory thing and sometimes that's true and sometimes it's just a more systemic problem you just don't have enough cortisol in your body but sticking cortisol you know unnatural injected cortisol into all those joints becomes a problem in itself too yeah. once in a while hey that's what you need that's the solution done properly but most of the time it ends up just buying you more time so you could keep thrashing yourself and not listening to your body. And you know, who here, the car people work on equipment. What happens if you just ignore sounds? Anybody ever drive a car and hear a weird sound and that sound actually turns out to be a good thing? Never, right? Never. And you could ignore it or it's intermittent, but chances are if it makes a sound once, it's gonna come back. And it could be anything from, you know, I had a wheel bearing out in my car and they tell, you know, took it to the mechanic, oh, it's your tires. So I drove another few thousand miles thinking my tires are fine. They're just loud. They're nice Michelins. And it was getting louder and louder and louder. And finally, I found out it was misdiagnosed. But that was a sign and symptom of my car. Until the wheel bearing was so loud, people get in my car and go, what's wrong even with this car? I'm like, oh, I'm so used to it. I don't even hear it, you know? But that's kind of what we do with our bodies. So, um, so cortisol. The androgens are real important. Anybody here of testosterone, DHEA? Those are androgens. Those are more masculine hormones, but they're not male hormones necessarily. So DHEA is really important for your mind and your sleep, your quality of thinking. Um, sex drive is in there. Testosterone, same thing, muscle mass. So we get people in um, all the time whose blood levels look normal, but the tissue levels aren't normal. So, but it's real popular, low T commercials. I see that everywhere testosterone gels testosterone injections i just had an officer come into the office he's been on testosterone injections for three years felt great at first and after you know six months didn't start to feel good and now his body's so saturated with these hormones it's all in the body fat so that's not a good solution so why do you think that happened because that, that's you know, I get a lot of questions on that and we don't need to go too deep into it, but you know, Hey, it, it, what's uh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and, and we have a good amount of folks that are looking at that. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that a, just a quick fix? Are we over, you know, it's almost like taking ibuprofen when you're in pain. Oh, it hurts. I and mean, it helps you. But after a long time, it, it's not a good thing. It's just kind of the same thing. Or is this, um, Sometimes it's warranted, mm -hmm. like your body's just worn out. You need some testosterone or you need to help your body so it can recover. Anytime you take something like a hormone, it should really be, if, if you have a functioning, um, if you're a male and you have functioning, you know, uh, male reproductive organs and adrenal glands, there's no reason you can't recover. So you take a little bit of something to help bring you into physiological normal so you can recover. But does anybody ever start doing that and actually recover and take care of themselves typically? No, what happens is yeah. you're low in this, we're just gonna add it and then they just keep burning themselves out. And so we have to ask, well, why is, if we know that the DHEA and testosterone and estrogen and cortisol is made in the adrenals and you don't have enough, we have to try to figure out why. All those adrenal hormones are made from cholesterol. You guys have all heard about cholesterol. That was demonized for a lot of years. There's a lot of books now saying, hey, cholesterol actually has nothing to do with heart disease. It was correlation, not causation. 
And now I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't have an opinion on that other than um, I believe heart disease statistically is worse than ever and people die with low cholesterol now. Cholesterol wasn't the thing. It was correlation, not causation. So if the body has cholesterol, it can't convert into DHEA and progesterone and cortisol and testosterone. That could be a digestive problem. It could be all kinds of things. Uh, but it's okay to treat symptoms as long as, in, in my opinion, as long as you're trying to figure out the root cause too. And that makes sense, right? Why not treat the, treat the symptom while you're figuring out the root cause? Because if you just try to figure out the root cause, a lot of times you'll just suffer too much. Like if you got to work and your knee is so bad, you can't walk or your low back hurts so bad, that's not the ideal situation for the department or your life, right? But the same thing, if you just take medication or testosterone or whatever and blanket that and don't work on the root, that's not a good life strategy either. And you're going to pay the price for that later. Absolutely. Maybe not the department, you will, you know, yeah. because that's your life. You got to live in this body a long time. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of how our system is set up, our medical system. I might be preaching to the choir, but you know, that's, um, uh, you know, I, I did the life body, I did a full body scan a few years ago and I, I had my, they took your heart out and those of you that did, it's fascinating. And I'd, I would recommend it. Um, they took my heart out and they looked at it and said, you have zero calcium or zero, zero plaque in your arteries. I have high cholesterol. I've always had it. So I went back to my doctor. He goes, hey, yeah, you know, uh, hey, we, we're going to get you on those statins. He keeps asking me. I said, doc, I'm not ever going to take them. Um, well, first off, I said, well, when do I get off of them? And he went, I, I stumped him. Well, how long do I take statins? And he looked at me and went, hmm. I go, yeah, how long? Am I going to just take it for six months? And I was obvious that he was, well, that's what you do. And you take them till you're, and then those yellow pot, bottles just start adding up. Right. Um, but the other one was, was in the, 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 when I had this done, I went to him and I said, well, I said, I'm not ever taking statins. He goes, why not? I said, cause I have a zero on the, on the, the calcium score. And he, well, and he didn't even know what to do with that either. And I'm only telling you that is because they're stuck in these, you know, here's your medicine. And then the person walks away. Like I, I dealt with a gal that was 12 years old and she had been taking ibuprofen two of them a day because her doctor said to take him for the last four years. And she had, I'll never forget, she didn't look healthy. And, you know, these are good, you know, you know, ibuprofen is good for seven to 10 days. Then you got to stop taking it. It's not a thing we take all the time. Well, my doc said for my knee, no, that's not how it works. And so none of these, you know, they, they can have a short term effect. Uh, but you got to always look at how am I going to get off of those? Because we got to fix the whole system, not just supplement something, band-aid it up and then keep moving. And um, um, so that's important as well for that longevity because it will come back to get you later on if that's the case, if, if you're looking for the short-term solutions. Yeah. So insulin, you guys have heard of insulin? I was just watching a strange movie. I walked in, my wife's watching a movie about somebody injecting insulin into saline bags and killing all these people in hospitals. Oh, yeah. You guys, yeah, like, what is this? Yeah. Like, that's creepy that somebody could even think of that. Gosh, these movies, I don't know if they're good for people to watch. Yeah. But, um, but why they were dying is because blood sugar is one of the most important yes. things. Yes. Somebody likes that movie. Yeah. Uh, we have a quick question um, from Zoom. Will the department support us doing full body scans as part of our annual physicals? Um, as of now, no. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and to, to speak on that, a lot of people come into my office with stacks, thousands and tens of thousands of dollars of imaging and scans. And most of the time I try, I try to make light of it because it's a really uncomfortable situation. I basically have to tell them this, this does no good for either of us. This is just pointing out what we already know that you're a hot mess. And that's a medical term, hot mess, right? Um, and what we have to do is we just have to simplify. And, and I have the best results just from simplifying. Some of the best results I've ever gotten, I, like one person, a high profile um, athlete, professional athlete. The only advice that I, I mean, I give him lots of advice and this and that, but the, the most important thing I ever said was stop eating fruit for that person. And that doesn't mean everybody should stop eating fruit if you wanna be a high profile athlete. But for that person, there was too much microbes in the body, too much fungus and yeast, blood sugar was dysregulated. And um, a lot of people don't understand, like fructose is, this is a little controversial to say, but like by definition, it's a poison because fructose has to go to the liver to convert to glucose, which anything that goes to the liver for conversion is kind of, you could say is a poison. There's patients with fatty livers I see all the time that don't drink alcohol. So we always think alcohol for some people and maybe somebody in this room or many, 
Uh, fruit is just as, as dangerous as al ethyl alcohol to the liver, yeah. which is wild to think. Um, and we're a world now of high fructose corn syrup. That's a whole nother argument. That is literally poison in my opinion. That's, that's harming kids pretty bad. But your most powerful hormone is insulin because insulin takes sugar from your blood and brings it into the cell, right? Your brain yeah. needs it. Your muscles need it. Um, athletes and bodybuilders, people trying to lose weight have to have good insulin management or else where does all that sugar want to go? If we eat carbohydrate, we don't waste much. We're very efficient creatures. If you eat one calorie more carbohydrate than you need, guess where it's going? Body fat, unless it's after a real intense workout. We could talk about that a little bit uh, at the end, but anybody here have diabetes in the family or know of somebody diabetic or I'm sure those tones go off because of diabetic shock. It's, it's really, diabetes is probably, from people I follow economically and in the health world, that's what's going to be the end of modern pain-based, sick-based medicine because it's going to get too expensive. Because what happens when somebody's diabetic long-term? Chopping toes and feet off, right? You guys ever see that? It's horrible. They're building huge wings of hospitals just for amputation because of the polyneuropathies. Okay, uh, that's a diabetes. Vision goes, oh, you could live a long time with no extremities and no vision. Dialysis, you could live a long time, you know, cleaning the blood for somebody. So the, the problem is that's really expensive. But insulin is your most powerful hormone because that means if we have a lot of insulin in our blood, it means we're sugar burning, right? We're eating carbohydrate and our body's burning that sugar for energy. What do most of us want to burn for energy? You got two, two fuel sources. Ketones, right? Where does ketone body come from? fat or in practice i call it potential energy because nobody wants to be called you know i have too much fat that sounds bad <laughs> just potential energy so but it's also important because uh blood sugar problems can trigger fight or flight response who here if they don't eat they skip a couple of meals they get shaky irritable things like that some people have the fast metabolisms other people could intermittent fast and not eat for two days anybody like that in the room who they just could go long periods of time um they're all online raising their hand right now, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's that's the way it works, and that's why, because of insulin. A lot of my patients, I'll tell them, look, instead of going to the labs, just go on Amazon and get like a diabetic starter kit for glucose. Wake up in the morning, prick your finger a few days in a row. And if you are waking up with 100 milligrams per deciliter sugar in your blood, that is a problem. You know, you guys all remember paramedic training? What, what were you taught for insulin, normal fasting insulin? Anybody not remember? Yeah. It was, it was 60 to 75 when I was in graduate school, right? When I was in like junior college all the way through graduate school, 60 to 75. And then I got into practice and I started seeing labs note fasting glucose up to 85. Well, oh, okay, maybe they had it wrong for, you know, 10 billion years or whatever, right? And in 2005, they figured it out, okay. And then like a few years later in practice, oh, glucose levels fasted now are okay up to 99. And now I, I spoke to a nurse in nursing school and they're saying 120. What does that mean? Like the average, basically to me, I interpret that as the average American has twice as much sugar in their blood as they should have, or they did have 30 years ago. And that's a problem, okay? Yeah. Um, it's a problem for our health, it's a problem for recovery, it's a problem for fitness, it's a problem for about everything. Um, and so insulin, real, real powerful. Anything to add on? Any questions on that? Like that, that right there would be a whole nother podcast, yeah. So this is more of just my curiosity. Why do you think that that range has shifted over time? Is it is it due to who's conducting the research, or or what? <laughs> why why is this? Why is why that's is that a, now? That's a that's a good different? question. I don't know. I, there, there's two ways to handle that question. We had it wrong, and now there's better science, right? Or maybe the human body is morphing into a different kind of human body than it was 50 years ago, right? I mean, if you look at statistics. I don't have this concrete, but I would imagine our lean body mass is lower than it used to be. Um, we're we're oh, higher yeah, body absolutely. fat percentage humans in general. Yeah. Uh, you ever you got well, and then the other thing is, well, I mean, if you deem that now you're insulin resistant or pre-diabetic, what does that do for insurance companies that are vetting people? Like that might, and that's not like a conspiracy. That's just like, hey, if I'm a business person all of a sudden now I have 10 million new people that are deemed diabetic. I can't insure that. We got we to gotta change some levels. We got to do yeah. something. I, it, it's probably in the middle of both of those. But the problem is, why is that happening, right? You know, why, right. why is it happening? First. Yeah, and it's happening yeah. a lot. I, I think it is those things like we're too stressed. 
it's the it's the it, food science plays a big role in that absolutely yeah and um because you know high fructose corn syrup didn't exist however many years ago i don't know when that hit the, i think 70s is when they started to make hydrogenated oils and high fructose corn syrup that's food science and it's fabulous it's fascinating it stabilizes food but uh the science experiment's not working so well for humanity for at least for north yeah. americans yeah we, we um that's the big part of it is where we've gone with our food and and not a conspiracy theory, but kind of turn into one a little bit. You know, one of the things I'm going to slowly start pushing out is really getting our eyes on what's out there. Because what, you know, like in the firehouse, for example, the, a, a traditional meal is different than what, what the traditional meal um, was like uh, 30 years ago. You know, as far as content, quality, chemicals, uh, how it was processed, all those things are playing a role. And we got to get eyes on that um, because it's starting to happen. And and so the the food that we eat now is different than the food that we ate back then, and it is affecting our bodies negatively. And and no one's going to talk about it, right? Um, and and you know you kind of saw it during the pandemic. You know nobody talked about healthy food. Everybody was as a matter of fact. I remember coming out of logistics. I go by Taco Bell, and instead of just in the after just in, at nighttime, that place was packed full of people every single day. And, and these are all playing a role in, in, in these changes in our body. I mean, look at the food that we're eating now um, and the way it's processed, it really is an issue. And I'd like to, us to get ahead of that a little bit. And so stay tuned on that. Like I said, there, there's another podcast right there, another, another conversation that I'd like to have with, with the membership and, and everybody, all of us, and, and get our eyes on that. So it is, it is definitely out there. Last one on there. I you know, uh, not to be too wordy, but dopamine and serotonin. Anybody hear dopamine? You all know about dopamine. Dopamine makes you feel good, right? It's that, it, it's dopamine is what is our reward, okay? Anything from a good workout to pleasurable food to getting a like on Facebook on something to online gaming to everything that's addictive pretty much in this world. Dopamine is our reward. It makes our brain really happy. And serotonin is the hormone that makes us feel content, okay? So if your gut doesn't work because you're chronically stressed, you have low serotonin, what happens when you run out of dopamine? You don't have any more reward or feel good. You don't have contentment, right? Because your serotonin levels are low. So then what do you do if you don't feel content about your life? You jack back up your dopamine, right? right? To feel good about life. But then the problem is you start to have to swing in those extremes. And this is why people get addicted. Addicted to sugar, addicted to the internet, pornography, addicted to too much physical training. I mean, some people are addicted to working out. Yes, sir. I got a quick question from, uh, they just texted in real quick. Yeah. All right. uh, this one's for coach. Uh, can a former employee still use the HQ gym even after retiring from Metro? <laughs> can a former employee use the HQ gym after retiring from Metro? That's the question. Hey man, we're all one big family, but they've, you know, as long as it's okay with the folks at HQ, I'm good with it. Absolutely. Sign the waiver. Yeah. Sign the waiver. Uh, <laughs> off topic, but that's all right. All right. So we'll roll through. So, so what is the, the main stressors? The next slide, just, just real quick. What are your main stressors? Let me flip that to the next yeah. one. Um, is it work, family, money, traffic, food? 20 minutes. Perfect. The tones, chemicals. What do you guys, like, what do you guys think the main stressors are in this life? Little of everything, more, you know, little of everything, right? Glyphosate, you guys know what glyphosate is? Generic name for Roundup? Holy cow, that's pretty scary. I, I, I listen into a doctor who breaks down what happens with Roundup, and it's a desiccant. I was just in Iowa, and uh, my cousin was, he's a farmer. Well, he's not a farmer, he supports farmers. He works for a, a, a chemical company. But when he said the name of the company, he looked around the room like, like there's like a drug deal going on. He's like, says the name and then he whispers it to me. I'm like, what, what's the deal? Cause I guess in Iowa, it's very controversial. So they're basically the company that makes liquid fertilizer. So the big chemical companies dry all the corn up with Roundup and then the corn won't, it won't grow right cause the soil's dead. And so they spray liquid fertilizer. So the whole thing's propped up cause the soil's dead and these chemicals kill all life. Um, so it's so it's getting so bad they don't even feed this corn and soy to the people anymore. They feed it to the animals. Guess what those animals become? 
yeah. our USDA, you know. So we're getting all this glyphosate in our bodies. It's water soluble, so it gets into the root system. It gets in everything. Um, I, I just looked up a list the other day. You know, almonds are one of the most heavily uh, used glyphosate uh, yeah. crop. And uh, I mean, organic shouldn't have any of that, but it's getting in everything. It's in rain, it's in, it's like mercury, it's in everything. But what that does, is it causes the gut to leak. Okay, and that's where we start to have a lot of the problems with the systemic inflammations and the gut trouble, which once again, you know, how are we taking care of bodies outside of work if we're eating foods yeah. that are full of glyphosate and uh, we're stuck in traffic and we have money worries and our, our families. Fructose. Yeah, and fructose. And so we have all these stresses, right? This big cumulative thing of stresses. And um, so all, you know, Coach and I are trying to offer to you guys is, hey, I want you to understand that this is a stressful life. Okay. It can be a stressful job, but stress is always interpreted by the, the human, like, right? Like, so yeah. for some of you, going to a, a, a an accident or something is very stressful. For others, it's not. It's just the way we're wired. It's our interpretation. Yeah. But let's just call work stressful, and that's fine. It's supposed to be. But how do you take care of your body, you know, when you're supposed to re be recovering? Okay. Are you eating foods that are not good for you? Are you over-exercising? Are you under-exercising? Are you over-drinking? Are you, you know, feeling really, really great because you're a vegan, but then you're eating nothing but fructose all the time? So there's all these issues. But to get to it, the symptoms, right? That's what we want to. Yeah. And real quick, you know, I can almost check out, check off all those, right? And so it's really becoming aware of where your stressors are. What are what are the most devastating? You know, oh, golly. And sometimes work is more. Sometimes family is more. Obviously, money. You know, um, traffic that that one time. You know, uh, uh, some of you have a have a hot button. You know, that's that quick fight or flight and. But, you know, we pretty much have a, our fingers in all these and, and it's just becoming aware of what those look like. Yeah. So here's some signs and symptoms. This is what I do in my practice. This is what I do when I just talk to people, cocktail party. Everybody's always got something wrong with them, right? You see somebody with holding their elbow or the shoulder. So, so when it comes to sleep, if you are, if you're allowing seven, eight hours sleep a night, now, obviously, if you're on shift, that might not happen. But when you're not, try to get some sleep. But if you're waking up, and you're tired and there's no reason you're waking up, that's a sign or a symptom that your adrenals are, are exhausted or fatigued, okay? If you have, you know, it, 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 it's okay to have anger if it's appropriate, right? But if you're getting angry and then you're angry at yourself because you're getting angry, anybody ever do that? Yeah. <laughs> your kid does something, you yell at your kid, and then you're mad at yourself for yelling at your kid and yeah. So, uh, or if you're anxious or depressed, those are indicators that maybe your, your gut's not working, typically a fight or flight, you know, response. If you lack hope, if you're fatigued, um, if you crave sugar, that's a big one. Um, and sugar cravings, remember, it, some people say, oh, I never eat sugar. Who didn't eat a piece of Halloween candy? Anybody? You and me. Well done. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but here's the thing. Here's what sugar means to me. Sugar, which is, you know, sucrose. Um, but sugar means fruit. Sugar means grain. Sugar means starch. Sugar means alcohol. Okay. Those are all, they're all carbohydrates. You know, um, if you're craving those things, then you probably have some adrenal issues um, and, and pain that doesn't make sense. This is the biggest one I, I yeah, deal with people. Absolutely. Pain that doesn't make sense. Who here has had a pain that's been there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? Anybody? Yeah, you give it a name. Yeah. You know, it's like your friend. Oh, yeah, this elbow, you know, and, they, and it usually has a, a back in NAM, you know, shrapnel or whatever. Yeah, and, and uh, in your head or whatever. Yeah. But. Yeah, you know, what, and then you get down into it, and it's the one that, that, how did it happen? I don't know. It just started to come on. And that's very common uh, in any in any industry, not just fire, but, you know, sitting in chairs, in t wherever. You know, there's a lot. First thing, you know, I, I've worked a lot in the clinic, and the first thing we ask is, what happened? And I listen for the very next few seconds on how they describe their injury. Well, I think it, okay, I'm done. Whatever that problem is, it's, that's not the problem. Right. It's usually something else related to what's happening in the body systemically, as well as and then, you know, and what happens with this low level uh, um, pro these issues that are going on in everyone's body and how they present themselves. Um, and it helps get us in the right direction on how we're going to cure what could be happening versus, you know, stepping off the curb and spraining your ankle. Oh, yeah. I stepped off and it rolled and oh, geez. OK, well, then we, then yeah, we that got ourselves. An issue. That's how yeah, it that, work. So I always yeah. tell people, like, if you grab a hot frying pan handle, anybody ever do that? 
it's not the one with the rubber and you're like, oh, if you let go real quick, you get lucky. If you held on too long, you get a first degree, second degree, third degree, you know, blisters. Yeah. The worst case scenario ever, you hold that thing, just watch it sizzle for about five, six seconds, right? Okay, you've, you, you, no matter how bad it is, how long is that gonna take to heal? Six weeks, two months, if it gets infected, let's say it's bad. Usually it's a few days though, right? You break an arm, how long does that take to heal? We all know how long you wear a cast for. Six weeks, and then it's stronger than it started. That's how the body works. But some of us, we get these back, neck, shoulder injuries, and they've been around forever. And that's not, that violates the nervous system. That's not, you don't ever wake up, anybody ever burn themselves and wake up five years later and your hand's burning? Like, oh, that was that burn from five years ago. No, but we do that with, oh, well, I hurt my shoulder that one time, or I hurt my low back. That is your brain screaming at you. It doesn't like something. That's your check engine light. That's the tones of your body going off. And you got to stop. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors just give us nonsense. They just give us a quick fix. But we have to stop and go, oh, this is probably what primary way my body's talking to me through fight or yeah. flight. And, and the thing is, like the next slide will just say, hey, some of you are early in your careers, you know, 20s, 30s. Some of you are at the end of the careers, you know, late 40s, 50s, mid 50s into what, 57, 60, you could retire now. Yeah. It's different for everybody. I mean, the adrenals work the same, but there are different stages of life. And that's what, what coach is going to try to do over time with you guys. And, and maybe I'll help a little bit too, is figure out where are you? What is your body telling you? What can you do outside of work and at work to be less stressed so your body works right? Okay. Because if you don't, you know, the early stages of all this are some sleepless nights, some gut trouble, some extra weight, your body distorts, right? You start to gain weight, no matter how hard you work out. And then the end result is when we get into dementia, heart disease, cancers, all the brain disorders now, Parkinson's, and it's just, and, and but cancer, cancer is the big scary one. I mean, that's just like, everybody's just like, we don't want to talk about it. We just hope we don't get it. And that's not good enough because we're getting it. And there's a reason for it. And you could roll that back and be well and, and, and you know, not work that way so maybe in the last couple of minutes let's talk about those hacks yeah if yeah and, and just one quick you know the the you know we have two things going on here in the district both um and on the line side we have the young guys coming in and you guys are bulletproof you know i i'm, I'm gonna do these workouts i'm gonna do all this stuff and i'm, I'm watching it already it's been you know we're, we're coming on four and a half five years here and i'm already seeing those hardcore guys start to lighten up now you know they start learning and you usually learn your lesson through pain and we all do, you know, even outside the fire service, you know, I can't do that anymore. It hurts too much. Right. And so um, early, you know, you, can you keep doing this effectively for 30 years in the academies? I start talking about that. I go, you know, enjoy the strength you have coming out of the academy because my whole attitude changes once you're out of the academy. I get them strong to get them ready for probation. And then after that, dude, no, no, no. This is a nice we've got you up to altitude. Now let's find a way to keep you up there nice and floating nicely for the next 30 years because you're not going to be pulling 400 off the floor uh, uh, when you're 40, 50 years old, you know? So you got to start looking at that because the, you know, that when it comes to this career, you got to, you know, we're trying to keep you as, as safe as possible. Uh, how can you roll the clock back and feel stronger for us older folks? There are things we can do to get some of that vitality back. And we're going to talk about that. So what can you do? There's some good things you can do. So these are like, you know, it's hard because everybody's very individual in the room, but these things I can pretty much say to anybody and feel confident. I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm not going to make anybody sick. I'm only going to help. Um, number one is walk outside in nature. Treadmills are great, but you're being walked and you guys aren't dogs, right? You're humans. Bipeds, walk, go outside. You're waterproof, so it's okay if it's raining, right? Uh, you're, 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 you, you sweat if it's hot, so it's okay. But this is what our bodies need to be robust and strong. Everybody's doing all this, what we call cardio, and it's usually not cardio. It's, it's not aerobic, it's anaerobic, and all you're doing is shredding muscles. Now, that may not be true. You might be doing it right, but for most people, they're not walking. If you're not walking 40 to 60 minutes a day, start doing that every day, every single day. I don't have 40 to 60 minutes. Yes, you do. You just, it might be challenging, but you do. And you definitely don't have time to be sick with some of the stuff we're talking about today. So walking every day for everybody. Real quick. Yep. So he told me to do that. When I went to see him uh, about a year ago or so, he said, yeah, stop all the weight training. I need you to walk an hour a day. And I, I you know, I almost hit him. You know, I go, what are you talking? What? He goes, yeah, yes. I don't want you to do in any of this. In the beginning, not long term. It's yeah. just in the yeah. beginning. And, People and, get that in their mind. Yeah. But but also, and I, it took me down this road of understanding yeah, you know, because we look at we look at folks that are walking. It's usually the old couple, or you know, whoever else. And you know, you know, I'm gonna go out for a run. You know, I'm gonna go lift weights, run, and all that stuff. And 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 I I developed a lot bigger appreciation for 
when it started to come, you know, well, this is how we get around. We ambulate, we walk a lot and also no phone, no headphones. You know, can you, can you detach from this poison right here, set it down, go for a one hour walk and not have it in your pocket. There are people in this room and on zoom and outside that cannot do that. That's a problem. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. listen, you can, you know, what I'm you saying? know th there's good, better, best. You crawl before you walk, you walk before you run. So, Hey, for the 10 minutes, I'm going to walk and I'm just not going to check this thing. Find out, you, you'll find out how addicted you are. And yeah. every time you check it, you guys know that thing called pickups on your phone. You could look and see how many times you pick it up independently. <laughs> every phone in here has pickups. Oh, look at it. You'll all be horrified. It's going to be between one and 400 times a day for you guys. Just like your screen time. I promise you I'm not on my phone much. The one who just thought that at least four hours a day, prove me wrong. Come show me yeah. afterwards. See, I'm not yeah. four hours a day. All right. But so, so walk. Next. What's the next one? Drink. Yeah. Don't drink calories. Period. If you want to have healthy hormones, and you want to lose weight or burn body fat, or you want to be a better athlete, whatever you're trying to do, it's almost always better to not drink your calories. That's alcohol. But no, I, I do a green smoothie in the morning. Yeah, you're probably ruining your metabolism doing that. I do this all day, every day. Stop pills, potions, smoothies. It doesn't mean absolute, but in general, don't drink your calories, drink water, right? Drink warm lemon water. That's even better for most, or, or room temperature lemon water. So walk, drink your calorie, don't drink calories. Um, if you're worried about that glyphosate, that roundup burning holes in our gut, which we all should be a little concerned. Um, I mean, talking about that nowadays, like talking about nuclear war, nobody wants to talk about it. But it's like, well, we could think about it a little bit, but don't use GMO grain. All right. Try not to use GMO grain and starch. Organic is better if you're going to eat grain and starch because that stuff is really bad for us. And it's loaded with chemicals and fructose. And so you're going to walk, you're not going to drink your calories. You can try to stay away from the GMO stuff. Um, don't do the A to Z diet. That's a, that's a real popular one, you guys. Anybody do the A to Z diet? You start at Adkins, you end at Zone, and you do all 300 diets in between. <laughs> Carnivore, what's, what's intermittent fasting? It's always, there's always a new one. For some, that's good. For most of you, it'll ruin you, or it'll, it'll yeah. be a problem. It's very rarely these diets work for anybody. It's a lifestyle that you have to find that works for your fight or flight system and your metabolic yeah. profile. And on that note, we know of some of these diets that are out there, the Carnivore, vegan uh zone keto you know uh, uh people ask me about it. what do you think i go sure try it you know see how it feels it may work for you it may not try this one it may work for you and it may even work for you for a certain amount of time and then it stops working and then try the next one and see if because because what we're all after is one thing is that's to feel good more you know look good feel good primary i be honest with you feel good is is more important than looking good Right. So if it makes you feel good and you get energy and you're able to be productive and, it, and it's allowing you to feel good about yourself and feel good about what you're doing, drops your stress levels down, then go for it. It may not may not be for the other person right next to you. They need something else. But we also have to have metabolic benchmarks, too, because, hey, if you have a headache and take morphine, guess what? Your headache goes away. Yeah. You feel pretty good off some oxy. That doesn't mean those are good lifestyle things, right? Those don't, that doesn't mean we should be doing it just because we could and feel good. So, you know, we could need some objectivity in there too. Um, so we got, we got walking, drinking calories, GMO, A to Z dieting, post-workout nutrition. This is the one time I will say, okay, if you guys do some serious intense workouts, please put the carbohydrates back into your muscles, okay? That's seriously anaerobic, like heavy weight training or really high intensity running. If you do those things, that's when you get to drink some calories. That's when pills and potions and bars and all that are actually engineered and they won't screw your metabolism and body up. But other than that, don't eat those bars, don't eat that, those potions and shakes. And it's all too high glycemic. It turns to sugar too quick. You don't need all those calories when you're not doing something super intense, okay? So post-workout nutrition. But other than that, stay away from all that. It doesn't work, all the keto treats and all it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, too good to be true. And the last thing is crack a window. Not, not because anybody stinks, but um, viruses, respiratory issues. You guys have heard of respiratory viruses. I think you guys maybe have heard about it in the last couple of years. Um, astronomically, exponentially, if you crack a window, the, the likelihood of, of aerosol transmission goes down like Huge. So just when you're in confined places and you got that person hacking behind you, you're like, oh my God, just, it's okay. Take a breath, you know, um, crack a window. That works better than about anything. And we're all heading into cold and flu season and we have mixed opinions on viruses. And I'm not even going to say those other words. You guys know what I'm talking about, but crack a window.
So those are the six things that if you guys and gals start doing, I assure you, you will see change in your health just from those six things. And those are easy things. Those are the simplest things. You know, I say when people bring in the, the stack of all the body scans and reports and all th tens of thousands of dollars, I set that aside and I say, hey, do these things first. Come back and see me in a month and we'll get started with your care. And just about everybody who does them is already losing weight, sleeping better, getting along better with their spouse. I mean, it's just wild how when we start to feel better, we behave better and, and we actually like ourselves. Okay. Absolutely. And that helps drop that low level, that low level fight or flight, which is um, what we're, we're out to do. And that's that, that's that overall stress that drives, you know, what, number one, you know, what, what causes it and what do we do about it? And um, uh, so, so if, with that, are there any other questions or um, anything that, that comes to mind? So moving forward from the health and fitness department, um, the, we're de developing a podcast and and so all these these branch offs you know like we didn't even address sleep you know that'll be one thing that i'd like to spend a whole hour on is what does good sleep look like and how do you get it you know nutrition we kind of talked about some things and it'll be more not you know we all kind of know how to eat but now looking at the quality of what we're eating because that's now coming down the down the train or down the down the track of looking at at, at what quality looks like and how do we get it you know, um, are, do we, are we still going to buy meat in the grocery store or are we going to have to source it out to those that know how to raise beef and, and things like that? We got to get our eyes on that. Um, um, I'm not a chicken little person, but it, I've watched it long enough and now it's like, okay, this is getting serious. And so I'd like to get in front of that and with the information, um, um, the recovery techniques, uh, uh, cold therapy, saunas, all that stuff. We're going to start addressing those and looking at what that looks like. You know, I would also, you know, the uh, full body scan question that that's another one that that I have to walk lightly on because of just the way the way that we look at at our members and and what we the information we get and how we handle that. We have to be very careful with. And that's just the nature of of the business here. Right. So I would love to give everybody full body scans. Um, stay tuned. But right now it's it's a tricky it's a tricky thing to work with to work around. So, um, uh, but we'll get somewhere with it. Same thing with cold therapy. We're looking at cold therapy in the stations. We're looking at, at what saunas would look like to help with that recovery, to help with getting you as strong as possible, putting cold therapy in the HQ here as well. Um, and, and at logs and at, at fleet. So those are things we're looking at from the, um, from the uh, department. And if there's not any questions, we're done. <laughs>